Сектор. Я заря один. Зажигание. Понял, остается зажигание. April 12, 1961, at 9.07 Moscow time, the first human space flight was made. A mankind dream came true. Yuri Gagarin was 27 years old. He made a circle around the Earth aboard the Vostok spacecraft. The flight took 108 minutes. He was the first human ever to see our planet from the outer space at an altitude of about 187 miles. Говорит Москва, работают все радиостанции Советского Союза. This is Radio Moscow. All broadcasting stations of the Soviet Union are on, transmitting the TASS statement about the first flight into the outer space. Oleg Ivanovsky, the chief designer of the Vostok capsule, was the one to close the hatch of the spacecraft where Yuri Gagarin was seated. Перед этим я своими руками участвовал в закрытии люка. I already took part in the hatch closure of our spacecraft, which we had been preparing before Yuri. I performed that on five or six vehicles at least. But this situation, to be frank, was a lot more complex and complicated. Since I was supposed to close the hatch after a human being, not a dog or a dummy. And this was the first such experience in the world. Vostok was a truly engineering masterpiece of its day and age. With complete automation and doubling of each system, however, even such backup couldn't guarantee success. It was truly a risky and daring adventure. I did sign the papers back then, saying everything was fine, saying I guarantee the flight safety, but I wouldn't do it now. We gained huge experience and realized the risks we had taken. There were 20 fighter pilots picked out of 3,000 applicants to be claimed the most healthy and strong man in our country. They were exposed to ultimate loneliness in an altitude chamber, to both heat and cold in a heat chamber and also to harsh centrifuge tests saw that they couldn't open their eyes during the procedure. They were tested on the edge of human capability, as nobody knew what exactly they would face in outer space. We were heading towards the unknown. Nobody on Earth knew how we were supposed to train a human for a spaceflight. No one at all. The specific requirements for one piloting a spacecraft were 1 meter 75 centimeters in height and 70 kilos in weight. The flight applicants had similar measurements as well as similar life stories. The future first cosmonaut was born in the village of Klushina near the city of Smolensk in 1934. At the age of seven he entered school. Just one month after that, Germans occupied the village. The occupation lasted for almost two years. They were evicted from their home, so his father made a dugout nearby to let his family live there. His parents, older siblings, younger brother and Yuri himself. Alexei Leonov, a cosmonaut and Gagarin's friend, was the first human to make a spacewalk in 1965. Leonov is the ninth child in his large family, so it also wasn't easy for him during the war. But who knows, 
if they would ever become space pioneers with truly Russian spirit, if it wasn't for that striving time. A rocket stands at about 50 meters. The rocket is about 50 meters high, with you sitting there in the upper part. And you are aware of being responsible for the labor of a huge amount of people. So why sit there, fearing that something might go wrong? You either go for it and put your life on the line, or you're just not happening. In the summer of 1960, six men were chosen out of the space group. German Titov, Pavel Popovich, Grigory Nilubov, Andrian Nikolaev, Valery Bikovsky, Yuri Gagarin. Still, it wasn't quite clear how to pick the best one. Those six were even asked to decide who was more reliable among them. Everyone decided on Gagarin. He had this special charm. He didn't intend to become noteworthy, yet he didn't stay in the shadow. He always was a frank and sincere person. I don't remember him being crafty or lying to anyone. And their choice was right. The biggest challenge was related to what happens after the flight. Being famous is perhaps much more difficult to handle. Gagarin handled it proudly, remaining sincere and open. We were wondering if he would change or not, and he didn't. He coped with the entire burden. His background that his parents brought him up with helped him to remain a human, a real man. Gagarin traveled halfway around the world. He was appreciated everywhere, and everyone from an ordinary to a famous person was eager to get his autograph. Манчестер встречает Юрия Гагарина. Советского космонавта радушно приветствовали жители старинного промышленного города Англии. Three months after the legendary flight, English steel workers invited their first spacemen to the old city of Manchester. This meeting was significant to Gagarin as he studied for a caster himself. And when he was just about to leave the United Kingdom, he got an official invitation from the Queen to visit the Buckingham Palace. Even the conservative English elite wouldn't help but meeting this man. Prince Andrew was only a baby back then, so they put him in his pram and said, See, here is little Prince Andrew. When he grows up, he will say that he also met Gagarin. The journalist that escorted the first cosmonaut in his foreign business trips often recalled his visit to Cuba. When the plane landed, the rain started to pour none of the thousand Cubans that were greeting the cosmonaut left. When the ladder was almost there, heavy tropical rain started, and they were so puzzled whether to go out or not. He and Kamanian were in the plane, all clean and neat in their snow-white shirts, starting to heat up in the plane while there was this heavy rain. But when they saw that the whole diplomatic corps, along with Fidel Castro, was standing patiently and waiting for him, they got out to get soaked to the skin. There was no such question, no matter how implied, that Gagarin would not answer clearly and sincerely. When a family man and the father of two kids is sent to space, it means that both the USSR government and you are absolutely secure that everything will turn out fine, aren't you? Well, I would replace sent with entrusted. Gagarin helped train other cosmonaut groups including the female team, though he was officially appointed the group commander only in 1964. When our small group was just assembled, Yuri was always there, helping us as a friend and the leader. At every training he was with us, especially when the vehicle was involved. The first cosmonaut was protected. They didn't even let him have another flight since he was a national hero. And he simply dreamed of going to space again. And he gained his point. He was appointed as Vladimir Komarov's backup pilot in 1967. They were preparing for the launch on board Soyuz 1 together. If for any reasons Komarov couldn't fly, then Gagarin would have taken his place. The flight aboard Soyuz 1 ended tragically. Vladimir Komarov perished. 
After Komarov's death, he was advised not to participate in further programs. Yet he pursued the goal of having this prohibition cancelled. Gagarin's life ended abruptly when he was only 34 years old. He crashed in a routine training flight on MiG-15 in 1968. Real heroes leave us being young. He never got a second chance to see the Earth through a window of a spacecraft. Although flying to other planets was his only dream. It has become a tradition for all cosmonauts now to lay flowers at Gagarin's memorial before and after their flights. For them, he's not just the first one, but also the symbol of their starry profession. Gagarin is a symbol of Russia. Gagarin is famous all over the world, yet he is a symbol of Russia. He proved that a human being is capable of overcoming the Earth's gravity. His feat makes us believe that one of these days people will be working on Mars and other planets, will be exploring both near and deep space. In the past 50 years, more than 500 people have flown to space, and 110 of them are Russian. Perhaps a couple of decades from now, we won't be counting that, and space flights will become a daily routine. But Yuri Gagarin will always remain the first one.